Boom, what's happening, Ward Wrestling Live here. Uh, we're here with another amazing wrestling mind and an amazing wrestling coach down here in Florida over at HB Plant in Tampa. Uh, he's been coaching there three years. He spent five years in the Marine Corps. Uh, he coached two schools over six years back in Michigan. Uh, and he's been uh, dabbling in some MMA as an actual fighter, not a coach yet, and uh, doing his thing there. So, man, and, and it's his birthday. So everybody wish Coach Carter a happy birthday. If you're watching this, hit him up. It's his birthday. I think he's 21 today, so he can drink. Yeah. <laughs> act, we might act like it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, man, we got Coach Jeremy Carter from HP Plant, another Florida guy. So what's up, buddy? Hey, I appreciate you having me on the show. It's awesome. Um, you know, like most coaches or, or wrestling dads, you know, we can we can talk. I, I talk 30 minutes about wrestling in my sleep. You know? <laughs> so, uh, this is going to go quick like that. I appreciate it, man. I, I can always do this. So That's awesome, man. I appreciate you reaching out and coming on. And Or maybe I reached out to you and you said yes, however it worked out. <laughs> I'm just glad you came on. Um, you know, everybody knows I got an open door policy. So if you want to come on, you know, just click the link and let's do it. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, so again, happy birthday to you. Appreciate you it. Today? What's that? How old are you today? 38. You can't 38. tell if I got a hat on. There you go. Now, now we're, we're working with it. Oh, man. <laughs> Still rolling around. Good for you. Um, yeah. So, man, this summer, kind of shitty, right? It's been a little different. Yeah, um, a little bit. But, you know, to that's one of the things that I, I try to tell, tell my guys is, you know, everybody else is do, having a bad situation, too. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit and cry or are you going to make the most of your time while you're here? You know, it's just uh, everybody's got work to do. And if you put it on hold, you, know, you just got to get creative and figure out how you're going to get the job done and obtain your goals and write your goals down. It's just, you're going to figure it out. Your, your brain's going to figure out how to get that done. It's so no excuses type thing, you know? Yeah. I think that, um, uh, I think a lot of kids have, uh, have really stayed on the mat a little bit, whether first at the house and then maybe the day I know, uh, my wife is more on the strict side as everybody knows, cause I yeah. say all the time. So, uh, my kids have been home, but at least they've been working out and, and doing something to get bigger and, and stay in shape and, and get better at some aspect. So, uh, you know, I just told Daniel, like, you can't control what's going on. You can't control your mom's decision. You can't control anybody's decision. You can just control what you can do while you're here. Exactly. And um, he just, he worked out. I said, I mean, like, you, you know what wrestling is, get stronger. That's going to help. Yeah, watch technique videos, run as much as you possibly can, lift every day, uh, eat properly, get as big as you can, you know, like, that's another thing too. I want to touch on um, my school. We are, we don't, we've never cut weight by the way. We, nobody does that. Right. Um, we, we manage our, uh, our weight and diet properly. So, um, but, but none, none of that is happening this year. I mean, you know, whether, whatever you, whatever you believe or, you know, whatever scientists are telling us, whatever the, these days, um, you know, it's, it's about responsibility and safety for the kids you know, above all, it's paramount. It's, it's the most important thing is the safety of the kids. So whatever, whatever you believe, it, it's just, you got to be responsible about it. And we are not doing any sort of extra dieting that would compromise someone's immune system. You know, this year, we're putting a focus on like monitoring, like we already, we always focus on it, but like absolutely hammering down on like, dude, just eat, you know, it's, eat be healthy take your vitamins work out properly get stronger than that guy you know yeah and i i wonder um do you think we, i don't know if this is why and and I, I i went to the super 32 qualifier last year but i i really didn't pay much attention other than i knew some people that i said hi to from the club and that was it but i saw where they added a it's a plus five this year at the qualifier is that is that normal or do you, or is that because of uh, what's been going on? I'm not sure. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that. And um, it wouldn't surprise me though, if it was, you know, um, yeah. already get that extra day 
or extra pollen for the you know continual day. So that that seems logical. I was wondering, uh, I was wondering if they did that because they know kids have been, you know, not able to have a normal routine. Oh yeah, yeah, um, and that's the thing. I. I'm, I, you know, I'm the actual head coach. I'm not just a, a club coach anymore. So when I talk to my guys, I, I can't, you can't tell them, Hey, you need to be doing this, you know? So this is a point where I really rely on my captains. I usually don't name my captains until after preseason conditioning. Cause I want to see what you did over summer. I want to see, you know, what your grades are. I want to see um, how you're influencing the new younger guys looking up to you. I just want to see it all, you know, you can, all the kids, they can do this all day long, but I want to see it. So, but I had to name my captains pretty much at the end of the year last year, because I told them, Hey, you guys want to get a run in. It has to be on you. You know, I can't instruct you to do that. So if you want your team to be good, you got to take some damn responsibility for it. You know, this is, I already had my senior year. It was awesome. All right. Like yeah. this is your, so this <laughs> is uh, <laughs> it's so, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's Walter. Um, but awesome. yeah, it, <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's on them. They're, it's their legacy. I already had my career. You know, it's on it's on them now. So it's if they want to work out and get strong. Yeah, and you know, speak speak of uh, speak of your career a little bit. I, I know uh, uh, you obviously <laughs> you got your water sprayer. Yeah, uh, you you wrestled in high school, right? Yeah, yeah. Now down here or up in Michigan? No, no, I'm uh, I'm from um, Northville, Michigan. It's uh, b halfway between Detroit and Upper. Um, I'm a Spartan, go green. So, uh, you know, I, I, I got into, I've always been in martial arts or, or some sort of combat sport or something my entire life. Um, <laughs> I, my dad's like 5'5 five, five or something, 5'6 five, maybe. Uh, I'm like five, three with shoes on, you know, like, like a lot of wrestlers. And I think that's the thing that attracts smaller guys to the sport is because it's like, Oh, that guy's the same size as me. You know what I mean? Well, you can either be a wrestler or a, or a horse jockey, right? Exactly. You know, so <laughs> it's like my allergies would kick in. It's just not. A good thing. So, uh, no, but I went to school kindergarten. I'll never forget this my entire life. This is like, like life shifting, you know? playing on the playground, kids are mean, um, and somebody tripped me, you know, and I got up, and I remember my dad telling me, shout out Ron Carter, you're the man, um, I remember my dad telling me, you know, don't ever start a fight, but if, you know, something's going on, you need to stick up for yourself, and, you know, it, and those around you that can't help themselves, so there was always a sense of that, and I got tripped and like thrown down in the mud or something. And I got up and got in a little skull. And as much as kindergartners can, you know. <laughs> but either way, I got sent home from school. And my dad, you know, was like, did you start it? And I'm like, no. He's like, good job. Uh, and he, told, <laughs> he told me, you know, you're always going to be small. Um, but you don't have to be, you know, you know you're not, you're not going to get picked on. You're not going to get bullied your whole life, you know. And that's another thing for parents out there that aren't wrestlers or aren't wrestling parents. You don't want your kids to get bullied. Get them in a combat sport. It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Kids are mean, you know, have the confidence to, you know, be able to walk with your head up and ability to not get picked on. Nobody's going to mess with a guy with ears like these. Doesn't matter if they're five, two, you know? So, um, so yeah, I got, I went, you know, after that day enrolled in Taekwondo. Now Taekwondo, I don't feel is the, you know, best martial art, but some people love it, um, but what it did do is teach me like a regiment and respect and discipline and like how to get used to martial arts. And I did that for, you know, about four years. And then I got into Ishinru karate with my dad and we did that all through, you know, the end of elementary school to early in high school. And then, you know, sometimes karate is not cool anymore when you start to hit puberty, right? So um, all my other friends are playing hockey and football and I'm you know, wearing a gi and I'm like, you know, it just didn't seem at the time, like something I wanted to continue so much. And, uh, and then I, I went out for the football team because I love football, but, um, you know, being five, two, you're not going to get too much playing time, no matter how fast you are or, uh, <laughs> how many practices you show up to on time. It, it doesn't matter. So 
my buddy gets and he comes up to me and says, hey man, you know, you need to wrestle. And I was like, I don't know, you know, we'll see. And he's like, listen, dude, if you, if you are on the team and you show up to practice all the time, you're gonna at least get to compete. You know, I didn't get a single play until, it was like a Rudy moment for JV football. Didn't get a single play until the crowd behind me was chanting, putting Carter, wild. And I, at that point, had never even seen Rudy. So, <laughs> you know, people, it was insane. So, um, end up joining the wrestling team. Uh, and then, you know, just absolutely hooked. My coaches were awesome. We, you know, took, um, you know, wrestled at 103, 103, and 103. And, um, you know, our team, we got top four in the state. Division one, that's the largest one in Michigan. Um, and then uh, we did that two years in a row. My senior year, we lost to Novi and uh, they ended up, I think, taking second or first in the state that year. So we lost to them by a couple points and, and districts. But either way, you know. Yeah, that's that's, uh, uh, coach Montagne says, awesome coach. He just gave you a shout out. And um, appreciate that. Is that is Montoya? Tommy? Kurt Montagne. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Right on. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, so, so you ended up uh, sure. heading, off to the, heading off to the Marine Corps. And, yeah, uh, I graduated, went to the Marine Corps. Uh, yeah, and, and obviously, um, Paris Island's not easy. So, um, when you're a wrestler, dude, that that Dan Gable quote is just absolutely spot on. I'm, I'm telling you what. I went in on the buddy program, you know, I, I tried to stick around and, and, and do community college and, uh, you know, I just, it happens. And I just, did. <laughs> my heart wasn't there. You know, I feel like I'm a pretty intelligent guy, but I, I just, and I go to school kids, but honestly, it just, uh, at, for me at that point in my life, I, I wasn't disciplined enough in that area to continue my education. So, um, call my best friend. We, Hey man, what are you, you thinking about joining the military? He goes, Oh yeah, I meant to tell you, dude, we uh, started talking to Marine Corps yesterday. All right, <laughs> it looks like I'm joining the Marine Corps. <laughs> and I'd signed up a couple months before 9/11, right? And I had signed up, and then that happened, and I was planning to leave November 5th, November 4th, November 5th, and um, I remember my talk, my talking to my dad. My dad, I'm pretty close to my dad, you can't tell. Um, he uh, says, hey, buddy, you know, he's thinking like a dad. <laughs> he go, he's not military. And he goes, hey, buddy, you know, still back out if you want. You know, you haven't actually left. And I'm like, what kind of punk would I look like at this point? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I sign up when it's all cool, shit <laughs> pops off. And then I'm just going to be like... Just kidding, you know, I'm going to go, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, uh, you know, went in during that and, um, you know, I, I did a tour in Iraq, uh, but thank God I didn't see combat. So, um, you know, there's a different type of military person that is uh, and a different type of respect that they deserve um, for, you know, military that is served and then your combat vets like those dudes. Like, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what I did, obviously, um, but I didn't do what they did. So, uh, you know, if you're a combat vet, thank you, because nothing happens without that stuff. So what, what would you. Um, hey. Not everybody can make it through Paris Island and not everybody makes it through in the first 11 weeks. And, yeah. Um, you were able to do that. What was what did wrestling do for you that made you. Uh, be able to 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 hump through that. Um, absolutely, and I, I kind of got sidetracked there. But what I was saying about Dan Gable after everything, you know, after wrestling, everything in life is easy. That's like a thousand percent true. You know, I, I went in with my best friend, and Andy's like, "We're at the crucible, the end of it." I, I you know, I did boot camp standing up, man, or standing on my head. It it was it was easy for me to be honest. You know, obviously the drill instructors are insane, but you play the game and stay out of the, you know, screw up kids and you're fine. But he's like, I'm so hungry. My best friend, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm giving him my food during the crucible, you know, and he's, this is like the test at the end of boot camp that where you, after you've done, you're a Marine now. And he's dying of hunger. And I'm like, here you go. He's like, how are you not hungry? And I'm like, dude, not only can I 
you know, do everything at a, you know, high skill level, but I can do it without food <laughs> because of wrestling. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, it's just like, I don't even need this. I'm, I'm, you know, I still got to go out there and get six for the team. You know, I still got a job to do. It doesn't matter if I got food in my system or if I, if I got a good night's sleep, obviously all that stuff is sets you up better for success, but you know, you still got a job to do at the end of the day. So that's it. I see your cat behind you, and then I hear my cat. <laughs> She's chasing the blanket. I don't know what's under there, but man, that's awesome, man. Well said. Yeah, I've, I've heard. Uh, I had uh, my father was a Marine. My grandfather was a Marine. Awesome. So, um, I've heard a lot of the stories, and uh, man, God bless those guys. Yeah, I've heard about the Crucible Walk where you come over the bridge, the hill, and you're coming down, and that's it's when pretty the, cool. I, I got goosebumps right now. Yeah, they, they tell you about it and uh, getting that, getting that. Uh, the EGA. Yeah, so that's cool, man. And it's good for, uh, for for kids to hear because if you're not prepared for it, um, it can be a shock to your system. Absolutely. I, I, you know, that's why I love coaching at plant. We're so close to the base, the McDill base. I got a lot of kids um, where their parents are, you know, active duty military. We have a strong military family and presence. It's, um, you know, I was raised with respect, but I, I never said, I'm, I'm from the North. We, a lot of people just don't say sir and ma'am. That's just the way it is. It's, it's not a disrespect, but it's coming down here. Most of my kids, yes, sir, no, sir. And I'm just like, all right, I'll take it, you know? So... <laughs> Uh, I had an Irish, I had an Irish Catholic grandmother, so she she taught me to say yes, ma'am, no, <laughs> yeah. ma yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, I knew better, and uh, uh, so listen. Nicholas Thomas says, "What's up, Coach?" Aaron Lindquist says, "What's up, Jeremy?" Uh, hey, Suzanne, yeah. Suzanne Shabara says, "Great job, Coach Carter." Now I know uh, where this drive and motivation towards your team comes from. Uh, Eric Floyd says, "Yes, sir." And uh, as he is a ranger himself. Awesome. So uh, he does the, uh, Eric does the 24 hour lock-ins. So right on. If, uh, if you ever want to get your kids out there and he, he, uh, he does these really cool things with these hammers at the end. So when he was a instructor training rangers at the end, he had this thing where he'd give the top top or somebody did something special, a hammer. And he brought that into his 24 hour lock-in camp. So that's very cool out at the end and uh and it's cool so yeah, uh, 248-982-8868 give me a text man set it up there you go eric floyd you heard that <clears throat> uh uh we were saying coach carter she said now i know where your drive and motivation towards your team comes from uh eric floyd yes sir ron carter well we know who that guy is proud of you yeah. son uh Denise Bergamo Geluso, if I totally screwed that up, I'm so sorry. That's a lot of tongue twisters there. Great job, Sonny. <laughs> yeah, that's mom. Yes. Mom. Sorry, mom. Uh, well, happy birthday to your boy. We got balloons behind me. Um, how have you, you know, you did, um, you did the Marine Corps and then and you kind of bounced around coaching a little bit back in your home state. Mm -hmm. And then you decided you wanted to, to dabble in some MMA. Uh, how, how well did your wrestling transfer to MMA? And, and uh, you know, what does wrestling mean to that sport? Oh, man. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's an absolute foundation uh, to be successful. Um, it, it, I mean, just look at, look at the UFC. You know, they're, they're the top, most popular, highest paid you know, athletic guys. Um, I mean, how many weight classes are there? And then how many of those champs are, their background is primarily wrestling. It's like 80% or something, you know what I mean? So, and, and this is the way that I've always thought about it, right? You've got the, you got your three elemental states, right? You got like, well, four, I don't know if they use plasma anymore or what they're teaching in science these days, but you got, you got solids, liquids, and gas, right? And the way that I've always said it is like your, your, your fight, your MMA fight always starts up on your feet. So you're starting in that, that air, that's where your molecules are moving around further apart. And if you want to keep it on your feet, if you're a better striker, 
and you want to keep it on your feet, then that liquid has to be better than the other guy's liquid, right? Otherwise, it's going to turn into a solid. So that solid is the BJJ, uh, you know, ground game, right? Slower moving parts, you're, you know, right there condenses. It's so if you have bad jujitsu and you have awesome stand-up game, you need to have a better takedown defense than that guy's takedown offense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's yeah. over to get you. Yeah, yeah. So the guy that can control it's positioning before points. That's a huge thing that I I teach my guys, and and it's absolutely incredible that that's one of my main fundamentals is position before points because that's what lost me my last MMA fight. <laughs> kid was kicking my butt on our feet. He's you know like five seven. Kid kid was awesome. Adrian uh, Halley, I think his name is. Good guy. Um, but he's kicking my butt on our feet. I'm like, dude, I got to get this on the ground. I got to take him down. So not like my jujitsu is sick, but I can ground and pound. Right. So I try to, I, you know, I take this kid down eventually. And then I'm like, okay, here it is. And he's already been beating me up. So I got a little excited and I, I take his back and he kind of like bases up and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, here we go. And instead of breaking him flat and controlling and taking out a post and driving to it, like my entire life has told me to do, I just jumped for his neck and tried to, cho- I was like, cause I, I knew we were running out of time. You know, I knew there was only like 20, 30 seconds left. I jumped for his neck, try to, you know, rear naked. And as he bucks me forward and I slip right off his back and then he started hammer fisting real quick and then hit me in a choke. And I was just like, Dude, how did I do that? You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. that's, that's all I preach and I did it. So that's one of those ones you want back, huh? Yeah, but if I didn't, I might still be fighting. Um, you know, and to answer your question from earlier, I'm, I'm probably done, like 90% done. Um, I spent like 15 grand on my teeth. You know, they're kind of my money maker. <laughs> so, like, uh, you know. Do you, um, you're you're obviously a wrestling coach and good at it, and you're you're growing a great sure team down there and doing big things for the state of Florida, which is awesome and welcoming. Um, do you see yourself coaching at at the MMA level or having MMA guys come into your room to to learn the wrestling aspect of it? And then, real quick, Scott Tobia said, uh, "Can't wait to watch Daryl Williams' kids this fall." Oh, Daryl, yeah, that's. We'll touch on that in a sec. Um, <laughs> but yeah, being an MMA coach, I would have loved to have had um, some more experience in the actual cage. But it's, you know, it's kind of more of a lifestyle. I, I think that I have more growing to do as a, uh, a fighter myself um, and as a martial artist myself. Even And that's wild. You, you, not, you just never stop growing and learning. I've been doing some combat sports and... Um, you know, martial arts, literally my, almost my entire life. Um, and, and I still feel like I'm not good enough in some aspects. And they're not like I'm not good enough, like I'm not confident, but like, oh, well, that dude might do it better. You know what I mean? Let him, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I always feel like I've got more to do, more work to do, more to, uh, but at the same time, I love teaching people. You know, if I've got something, I want to give it away. Yeah, and how... Um... Uh, Quan, Quan Leggett says, big coach, uh, Anthony Talma, uh, Talmud. Sorry, happy dude. birthday, Anthony. Sorry, dude, fuck that up. He said, happy birthday, coach. Can't wait to come back and visit you in the winter. Um, Man. <clears throat> I mean, it's crazy because you see, like, you watch the Contender Series, right? Yeah, and you see love that. Guys that. That go up there and take the fight, and then you see the guys that get to the UFC. I mean, how unbelievably good are those guys to get to that level is it is it is it the same as like we played basketball as kids and you see kids at the park that you thought were all world but they never made it to do shit but you thought they were the greatest basketball players you've ever seen and and they weren't or, or you've been in rooms and wrestling rooms and combat gyms and mma gyms where you're like man i've seen some beast but then when they get to that that level that's just a level that's and that comes down to confidence most of the time if like like um okay speaking of daryl williams he's my new assistant he's my new assistant head coach so everybody in the tampa area needs breaking to get news 
Breaking yeah. news, breaking news. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and we're going to have, we've already done a lot of big things. You know, plan has come so far from when Brian Kenny and JT Heckler and Matt Yost and, you know, Chuck Kilborn, all of, all of us got together and just changed the culture and plant. We've already come so far. And then now me and Daryl are just about to just take it off, you know, because that's, I got somebody who is all about leadership, all about instilling values and character, you know, um, and I've got Josh McGarry, Ian's dad, uh, who's a Lieutenant Colonel, uh, you know, he's helping out with our conditioning and, you know, he's the, he's the hammer. He's the, he cracks the whip on these kids. So um, plants about to level up a little bit. So That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Donna. Wow. Where do all these freaking last names come from? <laughs> Donna Ski, Scudo Skiudo. Uh, she says, uh, Coda Skiudo would love to have you corner him for his next USFL fight coach. I'm in. I'm in. Sign a contract. I'm in. There you go, Donna. I screwed up your name too. Welcome, everybody. Any other Italian, Polish, whatever the hell names want to come <laughs> on? Try to tongue twist me. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I, I I try not to talk to. You know, obviously, I don't. I do. I do not talk to any incoming eighth graders because that would be recruiting. So. But I've heard through the grapevine that Plant has a pretty awesome class coming in here. You know, Daryl Daryl's kids are twins, so and they're you know coming to Plant. They've already they already live in the district. They're slated, so um, you know they say, "Hey, my buddy Coda, my buddy this guy, my buddy this guy." Are, they're all we've all been training at Brandon forever, and this is why I got on that subject about to answer your question is historically my kids will work their butts off they're great kids they can beat anybody in tampa then they wrestle a maroon singlet that says brandon on this on the front and they get destroyed you know and it's because their name brand and they don't have that confidence against that brandon name brand you know their coach cozart has done such an amazing job at that school that we go out there we'll wax everybody else and then we go up against Brandon and we lose 72 to nothing, you know? So it's <laughs> like, it's not fun. It's not fun. And every time I'm like, I think we got them this time, guys. And they're like, yeah, coach, what are you, talking about? you know, like, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, but no, for real. And, and that's why, that's why you can see the Williams boys are going to do great because they've been practicing at Brandon's at Car coach Cozart's club, you know, for so long. You know, so they, they're not going to be nervous when they go out there against a Brandon kid. They already know them. They, they, they're the same old kid. No offense against Brandon kids. They're amazing. Their coaches are, their whole program is awesome. But if you, if you take them off a pedestal, then you got a shot at them. But if you just go, oh my God, it's Brandon, you don't have a chance. So when you, you see these guys in your, in your gym where you're like, dude, that guy is sick. He's got real potential to be in the UFC one day or to do something big. And he just, he's only a big fish in that small pond. And he hasn't actually trained with those other elite guys that are already on the national pedestal. They're going to get crushed because they just, they're going to go out there and they're going to go, oh my God, the, it's like the same, it's the same thing as the first time going to States. And you just look up and you're like, Oh shit, look at these bright lights. You know, like you just get starstruck and you get knocked out, you know? So. Well, uh, Anthony, Anthony Talmage has <clears throat> jumped on and said, wait a second, coach. I beat three Brandon kids. That's because you practice with Brandon kids. <laughs> he went to every single Brandon tournament over the weekend for the last two years. So good job, Anthony. That's why you did it. Yes. And, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, Speak about that, your, your area down there. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this since April 6th and I've gotten all I knew when I started this was my kids high school. And then the kids that I met at CFWA where my son was practicing for the, for the off season. And um, now I've gotten to meet so many amazing people, but I've seen what's going on down there on the West coast, um, you know, from BB train to his, in his image to, the Scorpions to Mark yeah, Prince yeah, the Club to the, the Canes Club opening up to um, the Manatee Mafia to if I'm forgetting you guys you got the top right you got uh, Tom Gunn, Trust. 
you got Jesuits, got the Tigers, right? You got Top yeah. Gun, you got Tampa Bay Brawlers. I mean, Paul wow. Harbor's got a club. Those yeah, those guys are awesome. Um, Iron Will, Iron Will, uh, Bloomingdale's area. They're in Brandon Gracie. They are awesome. Coach Kilborn and Coach Kiko, dude, those guys are sick. They know their stuff. It's a great facility. Um, they they got that going on there. Um, and what, and, uh, what do you see? I mean, what do you see going on over there? What uh, this sport has really taken shape over there, huh? It's um, you know. I can't really speak for it so much um, as prior to, you know, me being in the state. I, I, I have no knowledge of it, but I know when I first got here, I was like, hey, Tampa, uh, look at some of these guys, you know, some, this is kind of rough, you know, not, I, you know, I, I was from a really, really tough area in Michigan. So, uh, you know, it, it, I came down here, I'm like, wait, who the hell taught you that move? You know what I mean? Like, where, where's your coach? I need to talk to him, you know, like, so, uh, but things have really changed and it's because of these clubs. I mean, I, I tried to have the Tampa Bay wrestling club. We did it for three years, really, really tough to run a business um, when you're um, not that savvy in it, you know, but it, it, it was great. I got to help a lot of kids. I got to help a lot of kids in the area as well. And, um, you know, that kind of stuff is awesome. I, I just think that there's a new breed of coaches in this area that really, really, really give a shit about their kids, that really care about their kids' success, not just on the mat, but off the mat. Like, dude, plant, we, two years ago, we had the highest GPA in the state, you know, and I, I'm not a teacher. That's not necessarily on me. I put an emphasis on it, but that's, you know, my entire program, all my assistants and just the kids taking responsibility for themselves and then seeing it through. So, um, you know, we, we do leadership stuff. It's, I, and I think a lot of coaches in the area are starting to do that kind of stuff too. And it just transcends from real world. If you build that character from within, then kids are going to start having better confidence and they're going to see how good this sport is and how fruitful it can be off the mat. And then they actually start producing on the mat too. It's just, they go hand in hand. <clears throat> and, what, what's a, and what's amazing is, and I've never, <clears throat> excuse me, I've never been anywhere else to experience it. So, but I, the camaraderie that you see that's come in the Florida wrestling community through this whole thing, as yep. far as opening up a, sp a space or you've got three different local club teams now going to one spot to work, or you got the Canes opening up saying, hey, come over here. Mark Prince opening up saying, come over here. Yeah. You got BB Train saying, hey, we're, we're good. Who wants to come in? And, you know, you've got the guys up at Lake Gibson are, are trying to get a spot together. Pull count. Oh, yeah, Danny and, and hopefully Coach Weaver, man. That kid, Justin, he, he cares. He cares about kids. And that's the thing that you're getting at is that camaraderie. You know, when I'm – when I see, oh, that kid – you know what? I actually trained that kid like two years ago. Look at how good he's doing now. That's awesome, dude. That makes me feel so good. I used to think that the best feeling in the world was getting my hand raised. And that's awesome. It's an awesome feeling. But the best feeling in the world is seeing that kid that was struggling forever or even not even, but like when they finally have that light bulb moment and they break through that threshold and they, they get their hand raised and then they run over to you and they're like, coach, did you see that? And I'm like, yeah, coach. That. it was awesome dude like, yeah it was awesome and then it's, it's like crazy cool. I've, I've had anthony cerullo on from Tenerock. he's oh dude's awesome yeah big things over there. and uh and you just you've started to see like everyone's saying okay well if we can only get one spot everybody's welcome if we can only get two spots yeah welcome and and it's um uh, it's pretty cool because in a lot of sports you don't see that it's like okay that's the team we don't like we you don't talk to those guys mm -mm. leave us alone and I get it. Like if it was, if it was during the season, I can't imagine. Like, I can't imagine. I would see a two one a the number one and two one a teams in the same gym during the season, right? But um, three, down, yeah, here, down, down here, no. But um, but I think ahead. during the off season, they welcome it. Please, we want everybody from South Dade up to wherever. You are all welcome in the same room. I you know I wouldn't surprise me if they if they practice together. I mean, knowing what I've seen through this process, but I, I think during the season, it's a little different, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you, you, you don't want to train with your guys 
at least in season that are your direct competition. But I mean, up in Michigan, you know, postseason would happen and we'd get, you know, we'd have the, the most kids that got a good chance to get in out of districts to regionals and then regional states. So we would host area practices at our school. So if, you know, if, you know, you, oh, you got four qualifiers from Salem, bring them over. Oh, you got three qualifiers from Novi, bring them over. We just have, you know, conglomerate practices. And it wasn't- yeah, I, think, I think club practices have, because I've seen, I saw last year where, um, and I only was getting emails from CFWA at the time because that was the only club I knew about because that was all I knew, right? To them, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So I'd imagine everybody else was doing it, but I would see, hey, um, 5.30, 5 to 7.15, Monday and Wednesday, we're going to do state prep club or whatever. Prep yeah. for the states if you made it or prep for the districts or prep for the regions. So uh, I've seen stuff like that, but I can't, I can't imagine like a, a dual practice with the two teams is going on. No, we, we <laughs> would do that with teams that we were like super close with, but you know, the, there's rules against that now. Not to say that it doesn't happen or not to say that those rules weren't in place in Michigan, you know, 20 years ago, but um you know times have changed and they're a little bit stricter so you know oh, we just got a question from terry sparkman what uh what school was coach carter at in michigan um i wrestled at northville high school mustangs um graduated uh um class of 2000 and then I, when i started coaching i first coached at novi for uh, a couple years which was a little bit difficult for me because they're our rival <laughs> But um, I wanted to do it. I thought it was a great opportunity. They were a great group of kids. We had about 15 coaches that all really cared. Um, so uh, I did that for a couple of years. And then I went to Livonia Churchill. And um, that, was, that was home, Livonia Churchill. Speaking of Livonia Churchill, Coach Mike Krause, get back. Mike Krause, Mike Krause in St. Cloud this weekend. You know, he's doing, you know, floor wrestling, national coach of the friggin' millennium, whatever they call it. Dude is awesome. Graduated from Livonia Churchill, wrestled at Michigan State. If you've never been to a Coach Krause camp or clinic, you need to. It's It he's will change your the, career. He's right down the street. We went to, um, he was at CFWA last year. I took Daniel to him. Uh, yeah. It was fun. I had him on the show early on when I first started. Uh, um, We've messaged back and forth to see if we can do it again, but he's been really busy. But yeah, he's at TK this weekend, right? Yep, yep. And then he picked up another Florida uh, weekend or something. I saw him post something. He, he sent me something and I posted it in my room uh, where it, it says he picked up another Florida like the weekend after or something. Because he was yeah, like, hopefully. yeah, two weeks in Florida. <laughs> Let's go. He'll be, uh, you know, the the Eric Floyd guy I told you about that does a 24-hour clinics? Yep. Lockins. Uh, I believe Krause is going to be with him in Michigan. Eric, Eric, if you're listening, because um, Eric's like, I, I don't know how the both of us are going to do with these kids. Be <laughs> so full of energy. The kids by the end are be like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty awesome. All right, man. Well, was there anything else that you wanted to, to say or go over? Yeah, yeah. A couple of things uh, real quick. Um, you know, I wanted to kind of touch on the, uh, you know, work and coaching and personal life balance and how difficult that is, actually. Um, you know what? I have the question written down here. My bad. What's that? I actually do have. Oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. So talk um, about that. I mean, I mean, yeah, I ramble, I talk, man, especially about wrestling. So. Oh, let's keep going. Keep um, but, but yeah, when I, when I, I was, the, this is actually going to be my sixth, I think, sixth year at plant, volunteer for two, and then I was the assistant for one. And then, you know, Coach Kenny, um, he had to move to Texas and it was, uh, it was rough to see him go. And it was also, I think the universe was saying, hey, it's your time to be head coach now. And he and, just got elected to, uh, USA, Texas. Oh, dude, he's doing huge things. There's, side note, Brian Kenny is the epitome of wrestling. Like, he'll tell you, hey, I, wa I wasn't a beast. And he, you know, he, he just like picking kids up and putting them on their heads as much as possible. But 
You know, I don't, I don't think he made it out of districts. Neither did I. I'm not talking to any John. This is one of my best friends ever. So, um, but it's just a testament to how this sport is such an awesome platform. And like the work you put in is there's no limit. There's no ceiling. You know, he, this dude has come from, you know, varsity, probably junior and senior year and just worked his butt off. And now he's coaching on like a world level. That's insane. That's just amazing. And he's just, and he's just because he's put in the time and work and dedicated his life to it. And it, it, the dude's awesome. So. Yeah, and he's got his coach's corner or coach's apparel or whatever he calls it. And uh, yeah, coach's corner. He's doing big things there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were texting this morning. I think we texted, and, and yesterday we were texting because I, I may do some stuff with him. But um, yeah, he's yeah. been a big supporter. He was on early when I started the show, and uh, and I believe one of his coaches is coming on th this week or next week. I don't remember they signed up last night. So yeah, what a good dude. Awesome. Yeah. So that okay. So when Kenny left, I, you know, had to step into the role. Whether it, and that year was insane for me. You know, I, I didn't have any grooming. Um, because it kind of just happened all of a sudden. I I, I know how, I could run a practice with my eyes closed, I could set a lineup, I can bump kids around to beat any team. But as far dude, we had a we had a tournament one time and I forgot to schedule the buses. No joke. We're, you know, it was a rough year. So all the kids were ready though. <laughs> oh, they're ready. And they go, coach, hey, okay, come on here, man. But yeah, that was a rough year because you know, I'm trying to have everybody always has a struggle with their work life and then also, you know, their personal life. But add coaching, you know, and most of these guys, most of us do it for free just because we we've get, we've gotten so much from the sport. Like I, I have my job strictly because of wrestling. I know coach Michael Santos from Berkeley prep head coach, amazing dude. He actually got me my job selling insurance now because of wrestling. So I start, guess what is the first day of November 1st wrestling season and open enrollment for insurance. So I'm in a brand new career high level of intensity and commitment needed there. Um, and then you've got, you know, 40, 50 kids that you're responsible plus times two for all their parents. And then you got administrators and, you know, you're not making, I'm not, you're not making any money from the coaching if, if you're not doing clubs and clinics or anything like that. And it, it doesn't matter. People at work will be like, Hey man, you know, um, you ever think about just kind of putting the, the wrestling on hold so you can like, fire off take shoot out with your your career selling insurance and it's also like i'd love to man but i made a commitment to these kids and it's just all there is to do you know you have to give back there's no point in life if you're not giving back to, or helping other people you know it's just what's what the hell's the point you know so i, I agree <laughs> you know so um, it's, it's been tough it's been a tough couple of years but that's our whole thing at plant our motto Embrace the challenge. Matt McDonough, Iowa. Great interview. Look it up. Embrace the challenge. Um, don't shy away from it. You don't get better by beating up the punk, the little kid. You don't get better by that. You get better you got, by uh, the challenge. You, know? you got Kenny on speed dial. You're like, yo, man, what do I do here? Oh, my God. Not even kidding. I, I called him four or five times a day. <laughs> uh, somebody threw on here, hey, coach, where's the bus? <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of my kids or one of my parents but yeah it's um it's still an inside joke and then coach kenny never even touches the mat he flies over it <laughs> he does he levitated um there was there was a questionable call um i think it may have been against uh the manatee mafia at regionals and uh all of a sudden kenny was in the corner and then there's a picture of him just pointing and floating across the mat you know, it's a skill, but, and then all of a sudden he's in the middle of the mat. It's, uh, it's so that's our inside joke about superpowers and he gets super pissed. So um, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if Google, if Googs thought it was a questionable call. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably not. It's probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Googs was like, good call by me. I, I like yeah. it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, a couple other, I know we're, I know we're taking a minute here, but uh, I, you know, take as long as you need, man. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, one thing I want to talk about is um, just to throw this out there, 
and anybody, I'm be willing to discuss discuss this and debate it. But the Dan Gable 2000 Ultra Flexes are the best wrestling shoe that has ever been made. Their combat speed's cool, yeah, whatever. Any other shoe is subpar compared to the Dan Gable Ultra Flexes. Okay, just remember that. That's the truth. That's a fact. All right. Are they still available? No, I I will pay like so. If you have a pair of these six and a half, okay, the original Dan Gable, red, white, and blues, or black and white, I don't care. I have two of them still. I have two pairs, but I let one of my kids, Ian, borrow them for regionals three years ago, and he blew them out. They were they were on their last leg. They're twenty years old, um, so it wasn't his fault. It was an honor to see them die on the mat like that. But no, they're, I'll, I'll literally pay like 600 bucks for a pair of those. It's size six and a half, good quality. So if you know anybody. You went, you went yeah. like, you went to that like Marine Corps 300 yard stair right there. When you, when you were talking about those shoes, you were like, they got blown out on the mat. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I had a flashback. <laughs> yeah. You were having flash, you're like, oh, I need to go to the VA after this. Yeah. <laughs> those shoes, man. Yeah, so those are, that's one thing I wanted to say. Also wanted to say that Brent Metcalf is the greatest of all time. Another Michigan wrestler. So um, anybody wants to debate that, we can do that. How about, uh, so do you know the wrestling you guys? Uh, I don't think so. So Morgan, Charles, and uh, Dan Morgan. Dan's up in Detroit still. Charles has wrestling you down in South Florida, but it started up in Detroit. Uh, what about, uh, I had Nick Simmons on. He was I know Nick Simmons. Nobody beat me worse than that kid. <laughs> he, he, I, I put this on Facebook a couple of times just randomly. Um, I wrestled against Nick. We, it was a, a, a freestyle. First off, another fact about wrestling. I know you need to do it, but freestyle, you should... The sport is kind of weird when both wrestlers get up and don't know who scored. Okay, like just the the point system just never ever made sense to me. Um, I like what it teaches you. I like what it teaches kids about year round commitments and things like that. But back exposure on a takedown is it's like did he flip him or I, I don't know, man. It's just it's wild. And maybe somebody can school me up on it, but uh, I don't know. It's wild. I'd rather just throw as in regular folk style. So. Um, but anyways, Nick Simmons, I went to a freestyle tournament over the summer for like a national team qualifier or something. And it was at, well, I think it's Williamston where they're from. And I just heard, you know, these kids, him and his brother on the, the cover at ESPN magazine or some shit. And I'm like, oh my God, all right. They're my weight class too. Their dad's an Olympic champ or something. I'm just like, are you serious? Um, so, you know, that expression, it's like, you know, walk out on the mat, act like you own it, right? I'm like, I'm like, okay, I got this. I'm the man. I got this. I own this mat. And as I step on the mat, I look and I see, you know, Nick Simmons, state champ, 97. Nick Simmons, state champ, 98. And Nick's, and it's, it's literally the, on, on the mat. <laughs> yeah, and, and his brother, and his brother, and his dad. They're, all their names were on the mat. And I'm like, I, I don't own this mat. They do. <laughs> So, Talk about a mind fuck, huh? Oh, dude, this kid proceeds. He takes me down like almost instantly, and um, this is when him and they had that national pin streak and everything. I'm pretty sure he teched me too fast to pin me. Like, <laughs> dude, he he like took me down. He's the East Lansing Strangler for a reason, man. He put some. I don't even know this move, okay? And I'm a technique psychopath. Went up on my head, kinda, and then would just started rolling, like locked up, like a. I don't know, but I felt like if I don't go, my neck is going to break. Like I just roll, roll, roll. Otherwise I was paralyzed. Uh, that kid almost killed me. So yeah, um, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, think, um, I think most people would say the same thing when they wrestled him. <laughs> yeah, so um, another thing I wanted to uh, kind of, where, where am I, where's my, where's my notes at? Um, again, with that, um, you know, work life and personal balance and, and coaching balance, I want to just go out of my way and thank my gorgeous, amazing girlfriend, Amanda, for putting up with my crazy ass and my crazy schedule. 
and uh, you know she's awesome and she's super, mo more supportive than anybody I've ever had. So um, love you. I can't wait for dinner tonight. So I'll see you soon. And then again, I wanted to touch on the fact that um, I am licensed for health insurance in over 30 states. So if anybody needs health or life insurance and wants to, you know, support small businesses, I have access to everything and be able to just shop and put you in the best spot. I love working with, you know, small business owners. So if you got a gym or a club and that's your only line of financial security and you don't have health insurance, like what the hell are you doing? Okay, call me 248-982-8868. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, shop everything and find what's gonna be best for you. Um, just wanted to throw that out there real quick. I love it, man. It's, listen, it's been an honor having you on. I, I appreciate I wrote, it, dude. I wrote some notes down. I, what is that one quote you said? Uh, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Yeah, I think that may be Bruce Lee. Yeah, he was, he wasn't bad. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you at practice, coach. Uh, yeah. Jamie Rodriguez. Okay, right on, right on. Yeah, man. Well, listen, hey, it's been an absolute honor to have you on. We'll do 10 questions. Okay. Uh, and then we'll get you out for your birthday so you can get out there. But yes, again, sir. thank you so much. It's been a blessed, you know, again, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I appreciate it, dude. I, I'll, I, I, you know, want to invite me back. If I didn't talk too much, I'm always down. No, I don't care. You're welcome back anytime. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Clearwater or St. Pete? St. Pete. Bon me or Cuban sandwich? Uh, Cuban. Got to, you know, support Michael Santos and Berkeley Prep. <laughs> The aquarium or Bush Gardens? Aquarium. Let's go see some fish. Uh, do they still have the penguins that walk around and you can play with them and stuff? I'm not sure. I know they do at um, SeaWorld. Yeah. Uh, you go IPA or wheat beer? Uh, it's a hybrid uh, Magic Cat number nine. Is it an IPA? Kind of, maybe. Yeah. That high life. So, yeah, IPA, I guess. Love it. Uh, if you don't know, my brother and sister-in-law partners with St. Pete Brewing. Most people know oh, nice. it. right there. First Ave North, go down. Uh, he's got the Milo's IPA is awesome. The Grateful Stout is awesome. Uh, and there's so much more. But Ybor City or the Channel District? Ah, uh, depends on what kind of night I'm trying to have. <laughs> uh, Ybor is like mini New Orleans with like more dirt um and less, <laughs> less culture but i love it for certain nights but um and then channel side's nice but it's a little bit ritzy so, so i guess it's not what the, your wallet's looking like so ebor if you're looking to end the night with a street fight and channel side if you're looking to chill again those days are behind me this, <laughs> this is my money maker here i'm not trying to meet a curb you know so <laughs> uh lobster or stone crab um probably neither um just shrimp. I'm allergic to that kind of stuff. I can eat shrimp, though. Oh, so no oysters or clams? Don't know. Uh, too old to try and deal with the repercussions. Uh, you go football or hockey? Bucks or lightning? Um, hockey. And let's go Red Wings. <laughs> Detroit. Hey, right, real quick. What's, I got a question for you. What's the color of the um, ceiling in the Emily Arena where the lightning play? I have no idea. It's probably like gray or white or something, right? I'm thinking, yeah. We don't know the color of our ceiling in Detroit hockey in the Little Seas Arena because it's covered with banners. Oh, there there is a few banners in the Lightning Arena, I heard, but not like not like the Red Wings. <laughs> so then your color is red. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. You go Hard Rock or... Casino Cruise. Casino Cruise. Now, you can't eat shellfish or fish altogether? I can't eat fin fish. I can eat shellfish. Oh, so like if I said grouper or mahi, you're out on that stuff? Oh, gone. Nah. So I have to go like uh, New York strip or ribeye? 
uh, filet. Speak of ritzy, excuse me. Yeah, I, oh, I worked at Longhorn for three years. That's where, uh, that's, where Santos, <laughs> that's where Santos found me. I was slanging, you know, <laughs> slanging steaks. Yeah, slanging steaks. He was like, "You want to, you want to sell some insurance and help a lot of people out instead of just getting them food." I was like, "Yeah." So that's started nice. helping people out, saving them money on the insurance. Good. I think that's the place we go to usually after um, they have a, a blacktop tournament over up here, and then they have. Uh, I think districts was at the same school uh, and down the street there's our roadhouse and we go and hit up the state I but, uh, it. all right well then let's substitute the lobster and stone crab for for wings you go drums or flats flats i love flats man i hear a lot of ride hard but i love flats <laughs> so uh, the new thing is they well maybe it's not new i guess i just found them though they'll, they'll fry them then they'll grill them. So you get the fry, the dip, then they grill them. Uh, Mama says you like that mac and cheese. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm, that sounds good. I'm, I'm in on that. <laughs> mac and cheese <laughs> and the chicken wings. Yeah. All the uh, well, man, hey, um, like I said, man, I, I mean, we could probably talk for another couple hours, but it's your birthday. It's your birthday. birthday. It's your birthday. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Does that age me? Like 1994? Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're talking to other coaches here, so we're all up there. <laughs> yeah. Man, this was awesome, man. I'm so happy I got to meet you. Uh, another super awesome. I don't even, I didn't even know what I, I was texting you last night. Like, where the hell are you? You're like, yeah. I'm in Tampa. I know Tampa. But what? Yeah. So you're at Plant, oh, Plant City. No, I'm not at Plant City. I'm at HP. Yeah. Like, shit, there's so many coaches doing so many damn great things out there that you just got to <laughs> find them, and they're there. And uh, and I found one, and it's been a pleasure. I appreciate and, it, man. Ryan Kenny, he showed up. Happy birthday, yeah. brother. Carter is the man. Yeah, it's my dog. <laughs> He's there. What up, BK? Uh, yeah. Cool, man. Well, happy birthday. Enjoy it. Enjoy your cats. I see them running around. They're like, yo, yo, yep. dog, what up? I want some water, some food. You got to feed me first before you go off to your birthday dinner. And yeah, then, uh, you know, like I tell people, keep kicking life's ass. And uh, I can't wait to uh, meet everybody out in the real world. Um, uh, I hope to Likewise. Have some of these tournaments that are going to happen here soon. Absolutely, man. So again, uh, you know, we'll when, when parents' safety levels, you know, get back to normal, uh, I'm down for private lessons. I don't care. I, I, I love help. I don't care what school you're at. Um, if you want, if you want to work, if, uh, you know, I got, uh, you know, Dominguez uh, from uh, damn it. I springs that, you know, that's one of my guys that I coached for a year or two, you know, and then, and then you see him and it also, Oh shit, that kid's awesome. Now, you know, I don't care what school you're at. If you want to, if you want me to help your, your kids, especially if they're a, a lightweight guy, my lightweights are studs. And, um, it's cause I get, I can't, I can't beat up a 160 pounder. All right. So my, uh, my, my little guys are studs. Um, so, you know, if you want, Hit me up, 248-982-8868. Um, and I, I'm down for, you know, private lessons. Uh, and then, obviously, if anybody out there needs health insurance, come to me, 248-982-8868. You heard it there. And uh, uh, Mr. Carter, thank you so much. Uh, your dad said it was a lovely interview. Uh, Daryl Williams, great job. Jeremy Carter, Brian Kenny, yes. We got the mac and cheese. We got the awesome John, awesome job coach from – Nick Thomas. Nick John uh, Thomas. Yep. Suzanne Chabara is on here. Awesome chat. Hey, man, thanks for, uh, man, I'm glad I had you on. None of these people give a shit about me. <laughs> I'm here to, for you, man. This is good, man. You got, you got some love from your, from your. Uh, oh yeah. I had, uh, I had plant football. We got a new head coach there and there's a bad, uh, there's one thing we didn't get to really touch on. Maybe we could touch on it more. We got a new head coach. Um, Coach Wiener took a, a job in, as a college level now. So we got a new coach, uh, Coach uh, Brock, um, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Brock Meyer. He, um, as soon as I heard he was a new coach, I called him and I told him, hey, we need to work together, man. We need to, 
grow our programs together. Your football players, football is first. That's fine. But you got to send me your guys. They don't got to cut weight. They don't got to do it. I need big guys too. And he's on board. He shared this interview thing and they got like 6,000 followers for plant football. So oh, plant football, nice. I'll be at every game this year, every Friday oh, night. Tell him, thank you for sharing this thing. Yeah, man. And I appreciate it. Uh, see you, man. Keep doing life big. Enjoy your, your cake or whatever you get tonight and, uh, and, and have a good one, man. And come on anytime, man. You know how to get me. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. This is awesome. Thank have a good you. Night. you too.